start, I wanted to make a huge shout out to David Schmidt for providing us with this neat code for this lesson. So to start, we need to first include the servo library as it is needed for the servo motors that we are using. Now this section of the code is just variable declarations. So we will be declaring constant variables for the analog joystick, the pins that they will be using. We have two analog joysticks and these two analog joysticks has two potentiometers each for each of the axes that they will be controlling. So that will be the X and Y axis. So there will be one potentiometer for the X axis and one potentiometer for the Y axis. So that will be for analog pins. So the one potentiometer is controlling the left horizontal movement of the joystick. So it will be named left joystick horizontal. It is connected to pin A0 or analog pin 0. Same as the other ones, left joystick vertical control connected to pin A1, right joystick horizontal connected to pin A3, right joystick vertical connected to pin A2. As I mentioned before, they are declared as constant variables because we can actually change them physically. So on the shield, they are pre-wired and connected to these pins already. Now, we also need to declare constant variables for the left joystick button connected to pin 2 and right joystick button connected to pin, pin 4. Now, as a requirement, we need to instantiate the servo motors. We will be giving them names. So, base servo, the horizontal servo, and the vertical servo. We also have a clock servo. So, that is the four servos that we are using. So, each servos, we need to give them or we need to structure an information for those objects. So, servo object has four informations that we need to give them. So, the servo pin, the servo minimum value and the maximum value and the joystick pin. So, it is defined here. So, this is the information that we have declared here. So, base servo is here connected to pin 5 which uses the minimum value of 0 and the maximum value of 180 and will be controlled by the left joystick horizontal pin which is connected to pin A0. So that's how we read this information here. Horizontal servo connected to pin 9 with minimum value of 52 maximum value of 180 that's it so if you noticed earlier i actually changed this part of the code because you need to test it out or calibrate the close servo because the original value does not close up the close on my robotic arm kit so i had to change this one add some value to close it 100 percent so claw connected to pin 11 and minimum value of 60 maximum value of 105 so the maximum value will vary on the mounting that you did to your clause so you might as well change this on your end next we'll just declare the servo count which is 4 it just gets the total byte that use by all of the servos and divide it by the size of one servo that gives us the total value of four so most servo uses it eight bits and that is zero to seven which is if you actually get the value of the size of servos this is 28 and the size of servo info is seven so 28 divided by seven is four so why did David used this code instead of just putting 4 here. It's because if you want to add more servo, you can just instantiate another one 
and put one more here and the servo count will automatically change its value to 5 instead of 4. So that's it. You don't need to change anything here. Now this code or this function, the purpose of this function is to read the value of the potentiometer in your analog joystick and figure out if you are pushing it on the positive or the negative side of the axis. So for example, if you are pushing the y-axis potentiometer in your joystick upwards, it should give you a return value of 1. And if you're pushing it downwards, it should give you a return value of negative 1. And if you're not doing anything at all, the return value should be 0. As I mentioned before, those joysticks have potentiometers and those potentiometers produce a value if they produce a value of less than 250 it means that you are pushing it on the positive end of the axis and if it gives a value of more than 750 it means that it is producing a high resistance and gives a higher value which means that you are pushing the analog joystick on the negative side of the spectrum and will return the value of negative one so that's that's the purpose of this function it will be called in our loop function later on so it does not do anything at all this time but when the loop runs it will call this multiple times so moving on to our setup function so we'll just set the pin mode of our buttons to input pull up. This way we don't need to use resistors for debouncing them. Input pull up will automatically debounce the buttons that we are using. But we're, call, we're currently not using these buttons for now. So they don't really have a function. So this code right here is just a for loop for every servo count. So we have four servos, it will loop, loop four times and attach those servos into their respective pins or the respective pins that they are connected, which is 5, 9, 10, and 11. Now, we will also initialize them to start on the mid-range value of their position. So it's, it just computes it by using this minimum value or deduct this minimum value to the maximum value and divide it by 2 which gives the mid-range value and position every servo to their mid-range value. So we'll start with middle value of every servos and at a delay of 200 milliseconds. Now on the loop section so again another loop for every servo. Again, this section right here is also the same here. So it will it, it just says that just loop four times because we have four servos. And again, if it detects movement here, it will call the joystick read and assign servo numbers or the servo motor that needs to move and detects where to move oh so it again it reads the analog value and check what servo motor needs to move and where to move it so that's it and prints what potentiometer is used so currently we have four potentiometers again potentiometer 0 1 2 and 3 so you will probably get numbers 1 0 1 2 3 and prints what or where it is moving as per this function right here joystick read and then again reads where or what position the servo is currently at so this section right here checks if you are already on the minimum value or minimum here the minimum servo position if you're already at the minimum value and you're still pushing the, the analog joystick downwards and again if you're on the minimum value and you're still deducting position and if you're on the positive maximum positive value or in the maximum direction and you're still 
pushing the analog stick or the joystick, it will automatically change the move direction to zero, which limits the position of the servo and you can't actually move it more further. This way, it will prevent damage to our servo motors. But if you try to move the analog stick and you are not in the maximum and minimum position, it will print where, where you are moving the servos. That's it. So if you are moving, if you are from position 120 and you push the, the analog joystick upwards, it will print at position 120, move to position 121. And if you are moving it downwards, it will print at position 121, move to position 120. So that's it. And a delay of 1 or a delay of 50 to prevent our hero board from going crazy. So that's it. That's basically the sum summary of this code. As you can see, it's a pretty short code, but it does a lot. So again, thank you, David Schmidt, for providing us with this neat code. And have a good day.